Hi everyone, it's me again, Nick Orloff, your Instructional Technology Specialist here at Mendocino College. Today, we're going to talk about micro lectures, what they are and how to create them. A micro lecture is a short three to five minute video that focuses narrowly on one topic. They're all the rage right now in educational research and emerging models suggest that you should try to integrate them in your online classes instead of just posting full recordings of your lectures. While I'm sure most of you have seen this sort of video, I've made one myself using Adobe Spark, software that's available to all the faculty here one way or the other. It's about a topic near and dear to my heart, philosophy. Let's check it out. Have you ever heard somebody make the philosophical statement, everything is physical, or maybe all that exists is material? It's a popular philosophical stance nowadays both for folks involved in the hard sciences and uh, other things. In philosophy, we call this physicalism, sometimes materialism. Some people make a distinction between the two, and like anything in philosophy, it's a whole rabbit hole we want to avoid going down. So for the purposes of this video, we're going to call the stance, everything is physical, physicalism. What I'm gonna do now is present a famous thought experiment well, it's famous in analytical philosophy at least, known as the Jackson's Mary argument, sometimes Mary's room. It's an argument against physicalism. The thought experiment given by Jackson goes as follows. Imagine a hypothetical scientist, Mary, who's been locked away her whole life in a black and white room and gets all her information through a black and white television. Her skin is painted black and white. There are black and white contact lenses in her eyes. And Mary, her whole life, never experiences any other colors other than black and white. Now, Mary specializes in the neurophysiology of vision. And throughout the course of her life, she learns all the physical information there is to know about color. Everything. Which wavelengths correspond to which color, the precise physiology of how a human being comes to experience color, all of it. It's literally all she does her entire life and her knowledge about color is quote unquote complete. Or is it? One day, for whatever reason, Mary is let out of her black and white room and sees a ripe red tomato for the first time. Whoa. So the million dollar question is this. Does Mary learn anything new upon having the experience of seeing a ripe red tomato? Sit with that for a second. Mary has never had a phenomenal experience of color her entire life, yet she knows literally everything there is to know about color. But does Mary learn something new when she sees the tomato? According to Jackson, Mary does learn something new, namely the qualia, i.e. the subjective or qualitative properties of experience, of experiencing the color red, which he contends constitutes a non-physical fact. Jackson argues that because Mary knew everything physical there is to know about color prior to her release, and because she learned something new when she experienced the color red, it must be the case that physicalism is false, seeing that there's information that she learns which appears to not be physical. So physicalism is false, right? Disproven a philosophical stance relegated to the dustbin of history. Not quite. There are dozens of arguments against Jackson's Mary, and even more in support of it. What do you think? Let me know in your Canvas discussion module. That's all there is to it. Now, I could go on about this topic for hours and hours, but it's kind of dry, it's kind of obscure, and I realize that people who aren't uh, philosophy geeks their eyes are probably just gonna glaze over after 10 minutes. I'm sure this applies to most of you who are watching this. So you can kind of see the utility in uh, that micro lecture format. What makes something a micro lecture isn't all the bells and whistles. It's breaking your lectures down into, you know, five minute, 10 minute chunks that are more easily digestible by the students. Um, if you don't believe me about the necessity of this, Go ahead and take a look at your Canvas module if you have long lectures posted. 
you'll be able to see how long your students are sticking with the um, videos you posted. And I think it will surprise you how many people are um, clicking out of the lecture after maybe 10 minutes. So I'm going to take my own advice right now and stop talking before this video gets too long and your eyes start glazing over. In the next video that I'm going to send out, I'll show you how to use Adobe Premiere Rush to edit your videos and maybe add some bells and whistles if that's something that you want to do. All right, I'll see you all next time.